Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, really no. Thanks for having it. me. No. This will be fun. So I kind of want to dive right in because okay. I Friends Growing Up was my favorite show. <laughs> and you got and you got to do and I want to make sure I'm getting it correct. It's yeah. Friends the parody. Yes, it's Friends the parody musical. Right. So we're making fun of the TV show. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. I wish I had. Is it still going right now? Yeah, it's still running. I just left. Oh my god, how many months ago? I left in September of last year to go and do a Christmas show that I had booked, but I still go in like in and out frequently just because I'm also a vacation swing for them. So I still cover all the female tracks if there's an emergency, but yeah, I'm not there every single week anymore. All the female tracks and <laughs> Gunther. Fantastic. <laughs> that is maybe my favorite thing. I was, I was walking with a friend. I'm like, I have, I'm having on someone who covers, I didn't know it was all the female tracks. I thought it was just Phoebe. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think that's the only one that I've seen you in costume for. Yeah. And that was the one I took the most pictures in because it was the most uh, the one I was most excited about. I remember. Right. Well, Phoebe's the best character, mm -hmm. I think. I think it's Phoebe. Yeah. Phoebe's the best female, Ch and Chandler's the best male character. I think. Yeah, Phoebe was the one that my family wanted me to do from the get go. The minute I booked it, they were like, "Oh, who are you playing?" I was like, "I'm I'm the swing," Everyone. and they were like, "We wanted you to be Phoebe." So they were thrilled that that was also the first role I got to go on for. <laughs> I was actually originally supposed to go on for Monica and then our Phoebe got COVID. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, you're going on tonight at 8 PM with no rehearsal. I was like, amazing, <laughs> but it was so much fun. I mean, I had the best time doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so did the, your family like come out? How far away are your family? Where are they I grew at? up in Bucks County outside of Philadelphia. Okay. So, so hour they, and a half, not even. So did they make the trip in to see you as Phoebe? Oh yeah, yeah. they did. My aunt, my uncle did, um, my roommate, two of my closest girlfriends all came to see me. They were actually in the front row too because the front row is on the actual stage. So I'm sitting there being a dork on stage <laughs> and they're just sitting right in front of me laughing into my face. It was insane. It was so much fun though. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you, did at any point like, did they make you break even like a little bit? Like a Oh, little, like no, they didn't make me break. So many things went wrong during <laughs> that performance that made me break. So at one point, so we have the purple door, obviously, mm -hmm. for Monica's apartment. And we also had like a lot of like surprise reveals for characters in the show. I won't say who it was that was coming in, but the door broke. And it when the surprise guest was coming in. Yeah. So yeah. basically it was like after this whole thing of like, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Ross and Rachel kiss and Monica came into the room and she's like, I'm so happy for you guys. And the rest of us all come in. And there was like somebody behind the door waiting to come in. The door broke. Everybody saw who it was. She ran out on stage and said, I'm so happy for you guys and slammed the door shut. And then it opened again as she was dancing. So now I'm standing up there with my hand against the door being like, tell us about it, Mon. Like, <laughs> and the whole audience is laughing because they realize what happened. And I'm, my body's just pressed up against the door. I'm screaming at Joey across the stage when I'm supposed to be like sitting on the couch with him at this point. So that happened. And <laughs> there was a prop. Uh, Monica has a purse that has something inside of it that has to do with the next song. This is all so vague. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just it's not, okay. I'm not going well, to. Well, you don't want to ruin it. So no, it, it's just like the whole song revolves around this very specific prop that needs to be there, but it's hidden in Monica's purse. I, the problem was though, there were two purses on stage. One was Joey's man purse, which he has in the show. And then one was Monica's purse. She's like, Joey, I have the exact same purse. Look. And that had the, the prop in it that she needed. And so we were leaving the stage and I saw the purse sitting on the couch and I was like, oh, that must be Joey's purse that he left behind. So I picked it up and took it off stage. <laughs> And the stage manager just looks at me. He's like, why did you do that? So what did I do? I walked right back out on stage during the middle of a very heartfelt scene between Rachel and Monica and just said, hi, Monica, I stole this and handed it to her and <laughs> left. <laughs> and it was so, and my friends were like, that was the funniest part of the whole show. And I was like, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> I was like, that was a complete mistake. So things always went wrong, but honestly, I feel like it just made the show funnier when things did go wrong. Yeah. And did, quite frankly. Did you ever see the play that goes wrong at New World Stages? No, I still need to see it and I want to so badly. It's 
like hearing that story, I just got very big like play that goes wrong vibes because mm -hmm. it's it's all intentional, but the actors do such a good job of this isn't supposed to be happening, and right. like you see them like there is a part where they're holding a piece of the set up. Yes. And like, just like, it looks like mm -hmm. he's like leaning against it the way mm -hmm. that you said that you did the door and it's hilarious. Well, comedy is so much harder than tragedy because comedy is tr like tragedy plus timing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was always the hardest thing for us to learn, especially for the parody. It's like finding that balance of, yes, we're mimicking these characters and making fun of them, but we also don't want to be cartoons of them. We don't want to be like so over the top that it's not believable anymore. Right. And I think that's the hardest thing that I especially had to tap into because you tell me to go to 10, I'm going to go to like 35. <laughs> <laughs> it, there were definitely moments where they were like, all right, maybe not that much. <laughs> right. There was, um, I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about acting and like how to approach it. And they coincidentally referenced the scene where Ross is stuck in the leather pants Yes. And how actually, I think it was Brian Cranston that was was talking oh, about it. Oh wait, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, and he's talking about how for comedy, you need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. You need to be in it, and when you laugh, I think he was talking about uh, being on Malcolm in the Middle. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're taking it seriously, then you allow the audience to not need to take it seriously. Exactly, and that's why, like. Y he wasn't laughing because if he had been laughing, if Ross was laughing in that scene, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have been laughing as hard. Yeah. And I think that was the hardest thing that I had to learn as I got older because I definitely was the kind of person that I was like, oh, I know I'm being funny and I'm going to play into that more, especially growing up. I think my first like comedy I did in high school was Anything Goes. And I was playing, oh my gosh, what was her name? Bonnie. And at that point, that was like my first like big like comedic like sidekick role I was playing. And in my mind, I was like, oh, I need to make this so over the top and so ridiculous. And they liked that because then they were able to tell me to give less. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it was also just like pulling back to say, like, you don't need to work as hard because these people aren't trying to be funny. Or if they are, you'll know when it's happening because they're like playing jokes with each other. But if they're just saying, like, if something ridiculous is happening, just let it happen. Mm -hmm. They're like, you don't need to play into it more. They're like, you don't want the drama. You don't want the chaos. You want to avoid it. Yeah. And I think that was something that I had to learn from like my teen years. And I was like, why can't I just be completely over the top and stupid? <laughs> but as I've gotten older, I was like, oh, no, it is funnier when it's taken seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long have you been acting? Mm. Acting or just like performing in general? Oh, I get uh, oh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> that. Yeah. That, oh, my God. That made me sound like a douche. <laughs> I've been but I've been a performer I'm all my life. How long have I been performing? <laughs> that made me sound like a douche. No, stop. Oh my god, it's going great. Episode three, everyone. <laughs> so um, no, I started as a dancer when I was actually three years old. Mom put me in dance class from a young age, um, and I stuck with it all throughout my teens and even into college. But I always was a really good singer and I knew that, but I never told my family cause I was very, very shy. N not when I was like super, super young. When I was like born to the time I was like five, six, I was off the walls crazy, mm -hmm. was always talking, was over, always like dancing around being ridiculous. And then once I got to like elementary school, I, my parents noticed this too. Like I kind of pulled back and was very reserved and quiet, like did not talk, did not raise my hand in class, wasn't very social. Um, I think a lot of it was just because of like the mean girl behavior that starts at that age. Right. So I was always very quiet. So when I was doing dance, I was mostly just doing it because my parents were like, you need to have some sort of hobby just to kind of like put yourself out there. They didn't care what I wanted to do with my life though. Like I did everything under the sun. I played soccer. I did girl scouts. It, it was crazy, but I always was really passionate about singing. I didn't tell anyone that I, could sing though until I was 10 years old my elementary school was doing a talent show and I went to my parents and originally I think I was going to do like a dance with my friends or something and at the last minute I told them hey I think I'm going to sing actually and they looked at me and they said you can't sing and I said I can I've just never told you <laughs> so they said they were like 
well, can we hear you sing before you actually go on stage? And at the time, I didn't know why they were asking that. I was like, no. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and the whole reason they were asking was because they were like, oh, we just want to make sure like everything's right. going to be okay. protect you. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, so my parents were terrified. They were sitting in the audience. I went out on stage. I sang a Hannah Montana song called I Got Nerve. I wore a sparkly pink hat, a sparkly pink shirt, a sparkly pink skirt, and like... It, the video footage, oh my God, I'm so glad I don't have it because I would, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we can't find it because it was insane. Like I thought I was a rock star. And after that, my parents were just like, all right, like this is what she loves. Like we're going to encourage it. So I started doing theater from there. Um, I didn't want to do theater actually. I wanted to be a pop star. My mom was like, well, <laughs> she was like, if you want to be a pop star, like Selena Gomez and Hillary Duff, you have to do acting too. And I was like, oh, she's, Hillary Duff. She, oh, she's right. <laughs> oh, let me guess. That was your first celebrity crush, wasn't it? My first celebrity crush. I mean, I, it, it definitely made its way into the, into the loop, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think it was my first. I think my first, and I, it still exists, uh, is Emma Watson. I think that happened. That makes with, so much sense. Right? I see that. Yeah, yeah. That makes so much sense. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're roughly the same age. So like I was, we were all like 11 when that first Harry Potter movie came out. I think I was pretty young. I was like five, six. Right. Yeah. yeah 2001, 2002. Oh my God. I was three or four. <laughs> Hold on. I can, I can, I can fact, I can fact check that oh real quick. Oh my God. Was I four years Hold old? On. Hold on, Sorcerer's Stone. 2001. I was three years old. Yeah. Oh my God, that's crazy to think about because I grew up in a very big Harry Potter family. So yeah. that is nuts to think about. Yeah, but I mean, that's, you know, I, I had crushes on girls at school and then those <laughs> movies were like the first movies that we really watched enthusiastically. I had already read the books mm -hmm. up until what was out mm -hmm. or up until as far as I had gotten. I think it was book, uh, movie three that that crush, like Prisoner of Azkaban well, yeah. was like my favorite book. And then oh, it ended yeah. up being my favorite of the movies mm -hmm. until I think Half-Blood Prince. But Really? Well, the book was, the book became my favorite since Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. And then I think, you know how you love the thing that's new because it's new and you're just discovering right, it? Right, exactly. I think I ended up moving back to Prisoner of Azkaban once they had both been in my mm -hmm. life about the same amount of time. But the book, uh, Half-Blood Prince, was so much better than the movie. I hated the Half-Blood Prince. I'm, so I'm sorry to all my Potter heads. I'm going to say it right to the camera. Movie, movie or sorry. book? Both? Uh, no, the movie. The movie. It, I yeah. hate... I th no, I didn't fall asleep. I just could not tell oh. you what the plot was of it. Oh. Because I have not rewatched it since I saw it in theaters. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a, that's a I'm, hot take. I am slandering this film right now. Someone's going to come for me in the comments. <laughs> it's, that's, a, that's a, well, look, I, I loved the book. Mm -hmm. The movie did not do the book justice. The I, movie yeah. was, it was a little all over the place. Yeah, for sure. Because um, they just wanted to cram everything in. That, I think, was why I didn't enjoy it as much. I think also, I don't know, I just feel like it came after, like, Order of the Phoenix, Goblet of Fire, Prisoner of Azkaban, all of which I thought were absolutely incredible. Right. And then it's followed up by Deathly Hallows, part one and two, which were also, like, first of all, I mean, I was, like, crying in the theater with my, I saw it with my dad, I remember, and I was, like, <laughs> 10 years old, I was, like, crying in the theater, I was, like, my childhood's over. <laughs> but... No, I just think it had a lot to live up to. And in comparison, I just don't look at it and say like, oh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. It was that weird one between three great mm -hmm. iterations. Mm -hmm. And then also Deathly Hallows got split into two so mm -hmm. they could take more time with it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's like the first franchise that did like a two-parter for a book or like any like two-part film in general. I think you might be right. I'm trying to reckon. Because I remember when they announced brain. that and people were like, oh my God, this is like insane. Yeah. Mockingjay was right around the same time, but Harry Potter was first, right? Mocking. So Hunger Games, I remember the first one came out when I was in middle school. Okay. Oh my God. I'm like losing all track of time <laughs> here. Because I, I remember I saw Hunger Games in theaters with my friends when I was in like eighth grade. When did Deathly Hallows come out? 
To the Googler. <laughs> to Wikipedia. Deathly Where Hallows. all information is accurate. Right? And not at all edited by people living in their basement. <laughs> Deathly Hallows, part one, 2010, part two, 2011. So Okay, so like at that point, oh yeah, I was at end of seventh grade. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> Mocking, Mocking Jay, part one and two, 2014 and 15, respectively. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, Harry, Harry Potter, I think, mm -hmm. did it first. I mean, unless you count George Lucas saying that Star Wars episodes one through six are all one movie. But that doesn't count. Yeah, because you wouldn't know that, I feel like, up front. Like, especially, like, when I first started watching Star Wars, which, this is so embarrassing, it wasn't until high school. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're bringing out the nerd in me on this episode. It's great. It's, it's I mean, I'm the nerd on the show, so I'm gonna, <laughs> we're going to talk about nerd things. Oh, my God. No, it's great. I love it. No, I didn't start watching it until high school. I think because we were learning about, like, Greek tragedies, and they're like, oh, well, the best example of that and all of, like, the, um, like, techniques that they put into, like, Greek tragedies is put into these films, and that's why they're so successful, is the story writing. And so we would, like, sit there and watch the films and break them down, and I was like, wait, these are actually, like, amazing? Why have I been sleeping on them? Mm -hmm. And my sisters were the same way, and I remember during college, at one point, I think we binge-watched, like, episodes one through six nice. together. In that order or in the release order? Release order, yeah. Fantastic. No, we didn't do in chronological order because who does that? <laughs> People who don't know. Okay, f you know what? Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Yep, you know what? That's fair. So then your family, like, your, I know I learned about Star Wars because my dad introduced me. Yeah, I mean, my dad um, loved Star Wars like everybody did. So then he didn't, why didn't he introduce you guys to it? You know, <laughs> this is why. So my dad had to raise three girls. We had a female dog and my mother. So whenever we were sitting on the couch as a family, or in my case, the floor, because we didn't all fit on the couch, <laughs> um, watching movies or like deciding, like going through like back when Comcast On Demand was a thing, we would, go, <laughs> we would go through and he would be like, Star Wars episode two. And my mom was like, no, put on the Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> so he got outvoted. I mean, it wasn't his fault. <laughs> Yeah. He was just outvoted. That was the reason. Like, he wanted to show it to us. We were just in there like, no, we want to watch Mamma Mia for right. the seventh time today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I feel bad because I think that's what happens to my mom. Because <laughs> my my parents had me and my sister. So one and one. Oh, okay. But now in adulthood, my sister lives down in Florida and I'm here. So when oh, okay. I go home, usually it's just me and my parents. Okay. And... Usually, my dad will have the remote and any, like, he's, he owns, I've got him the, like, Blu-ray box set of mm -hmm. all the Terminator movies, all the Alien movies, all of the Raiders, like, Indiana Jones movies. Yeah. They're all in plastic still. I, I got these that. for him 15 years ago. Oh, my God. But if he's <laughs> flicking through the channels, he will see Alien, one, two, three, it doesn't matter, and he'll leave it on. <laughs> and he'll watch it like he'll miss the first 20 minutes or he'll miss the first two hours and he'll just watch the last 20 minutes. Love that. You know, see, I'm not like that. If it's like the last 10 minutes of a movie and I see it and it's something that I'm like, oh, I really want to watch that. Oh, but it's almost over. I need to go and like rent it or find right. it on whatever streaming platform it is now because I need to watch it from beginning to end. Like, yeah, I I have not watched Titanic since seventh grade. And the only reason, not because it's sad, not because it's depressing. It's a time it's, commitment. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the big reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, th it's what are you doing for three and a half hours? I'm sitting here feeling all of my emotions in order. Any movie that Steven Spielberg made, uh, like literally anything that's, or, or Baz Luhrmann, like anything that is longer than three hours, I need to plan in advance. Yeah. I've got places to be. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> no, I can't commit to that stuff. No, except yeah. for, except for Elvis that I will put on in the background all day, every day, but that's because I'm obsessed with Austin Butler. <laughs> Did you like Elvis? Yes and no. Um, I loved Austin Butler as I, Elvis. I think he was great. He was fantastic. It um, annoyed me when he said he had a hard time breaking out of the accent. Cause I'm like, what? <laughs> You know, I met him, right? 
No. You didn't know this? No. Oh my God. I, I never told you this story. I'm ready to hear it now. Okay. So I was working at my old job as a server at this really nice restaurant in Soho. And it was the day before my birthday. The movie hadn't come out yet, but I was really excited for it because first of all, I love Elvis because my grandma was obsessed with him and like constantly played his music. And then on top of it, I loved Austin Butler, childhood crush. Sorry. Uh -huh. Um, so I was sitting at work and it was completely dead. It was the middle of summer. Everybody was on vacation. And I was just like, I've been here for two hours. I'm not really making any money. Like if in the next hour I don't get any tables, can I get cut? And they were like, yeah, sure. That's not a problem. Some, some guy walks in with this girl and all I notice immediately is the dog on the leash that he's holding. And I was like, I don't care who this person is. Put them in my section. Cause I just want this cute dog right. in front of me. So I go to the back, I get a bowl of water for the dog, not even for the owners. I don't get them water. <laughs> <laughs> and I go over to the table. I put the bowl in front and all of a sudden I just hear, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> look, I look up. Why was that so good? That wasn't good at no, all, but thank you. No, that was I, better than I think you think it was. I looked up and I almost crapped my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's Elvis. <laughs> and then I turned to my left and it's Kaya Gerber. <laughs> and I'm just like, what can I get for you? <laughs> and he was like, can I get a nice latte with um, almond milk? I was like, yeah, sure. Kaya Gerber, what do you want? <laughs> and she's like, can I just get like iced water with lemon? Like she's so, oh my God, they were so sweet. Yeah. Oh my God. So I went up to my, the owner was there and I was like, you didn't tell me that <laughs> this was who I was serving. And he was like, no, like I didn't want to freak you out or anything. I was like, but it would have been good to get a warning beforehand because now right. I'm like avoiding them like the plague because I'm right. like so embarrassed. And I was like, can I take a second? And I went downstairs and I literally was just like, take a deep breath. You're fine. It's good. Stay calm. <laughs> because also we weren't allowed to be like fangirling over these people if they right. came into work. I made that mistake one time and I never will again. I, I got, I did get in trouble once for Ooh. fangirling on Joe Jonas. <laughs> Oh. I literally, I served him and I pretended like I didn't know who he was. And then at the end of his meal, when I handed him his check, I just said, it, by the way, like, it was so wonderful getting to meet you. And he didn't hear me. And his friend was like, she was talking to you. <laughs> and afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> <And afterwards, laughs> he was Afterwards, he tapped me on the back. He was like, I'm so sorry. It, it was lovely to meet you as well. And then he left. So then I was like, wait, I want a picture with him. And I asked my coworker, I was like, am I allowed to? And she's like, I mean, I guess. I ran down the street and I asked oh. him to take a selfie with me. And then the next day, <laughs> my the owner of the company came in because he came in every day. And we were talking about like favorite celebrities and stuff. And he was like, my favorite Jonas brother is Joe. Caroline, who's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, it was like his very polite way of saying to me, like, maybe don't do that. Right. That's but uh, here's the thing. If anybody else was in my position, are you really going to sit there and tell me that you wouldn't? They absolutely would. Because nobody I, was going to believe me if I told them, guys, I served Joe Jonas today. They were going to be like, Pixar didn't happen. Right. So it had to happen. Exactly. Listen. They, I... I have a very similar story to the dog story. Mm. I was, it was my first year out here. I think it was actually my second month. I moved in October of 2012. I think this was December or January of 2012, 13. And me and my buddy James are on our way to a birthday party downtown. Like, where were you going? Uh, gold Bar, the one with all oh, the gold skulls. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. And so we're lost. We're, we're new to New York. It's it's near Financial District, Soho. All the blocks are close to each other. Oh, and yeah. you have no signal. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell where you're going. GPS isn't very good yet. Mm -hmm. And it's his boss's birthday party. So he's the one trying to figure out how to get us there. We stop on this corner. I have no idea what's going on. So I'm just like looking. I'm wandering. I'm like killing time while he tries to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. This woman in like athletic, like, like, 
the, like jogging like pants and like a, a crop top whatever comes like jogging up with their dogs and they stop on the corner and I'm nearby and they do the thing that dogs do where if they're friendly they look at you and they like run go towards you, you. Yeah. exactly so they do that and I like get down like crouch down I'm like scrushing their faces and they're like they're giving me kisses and I'm like oh my god they're so sweet and she's laughing and she's like oh thank you and I like scratch in their heads and I like don't look up I'm doing this for like 30 seconds and then like I see the light like the crosswalk light go for walking yeah and I'm I stand up I'm like I'm gonna let them go I stand up I look at her in the face I'm like hey thank you so much have a great night I turn around and I'm like that was Jessica Biel <laughs> that was that was that was Jessica Biel who I was just Whose, whose dogs I aggressively just let lick my face <laughs> for for 30 seconds. And I just, I casually spoke to, but made no eye contact You with. were kissed by a celebrity technically then. Two. There well, were two. And so I was, I was 90% certain that it was her. And then I did a weird, creepy stalker thing where I Googled Jessica Biel walking her dogs because I knew what the dogs looked like. And I just roughly wanted to confirm. It I was wanted her. to confirm. And I'm like, it was like a tan dog and then like a black and white dog and both like medium size. Mm -hmm. And I see pictures of her like walking her dogs in California. And I'm like, those are the same dogs. That mm -hmm. was Jessica Biel. It's fantastic. Oh my God. No, that's the craziest thing I think about living in New York. Um, my roommate has lived here. Hi, Emily. Shout out to you. Um, she's lived here now for, gosh, how many years? Six years, I think now. Oh, wow. um, and she told me, she's like, you'll start seeing celebrities all the time. First three months yeah. here, I didn't meet anyone. Then all of a sudden, I was meeting John Legend, mm -hmm. Toby Maguire. I met Toby Maguire. Sean Mendes. Yeah. Toby's actually pretty chill. He's Very pretty, sweet. as long as you're chill. Oh, yeah. If, no. if you approach him like a fanboy, then yeah, he's no. going to be like, ah. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, and honestly, like, if I... Think about if you were in their shoes too. Like, oh, I think absolutely. if anyone ran up to you and was like, "Hi, I love you," I think right. you would run away too. Yeah. Like, think about when somebody comes up behind you in New York that you know and taps you on the shoulder, and you turn around, and you're like, "Who is touching me right, right. now?" Like, <laughs> yeah, you're on you're on sensory overload already, and now mm -hmm. someone's break. Yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, I've seen Shia LaBeouf like five times, just walking down the street, like I'm looking around, just like being aware of my surroundings and I've locked eyes with Shia LaBeouf like five times. I could see Shia LaBeouf being the kind of person that's just like, I'm going to start my day, go get like a green juice and go yeah. on a walk. So that doesn't surprise me yeah. at all. Honestly, and it, was, it was close enough. Like I haven't seen him in like five years, but I saw him often for like mm -hmm. three. I think he knew. I think oh, he, he started. Remembered you? Well, cause one day I'm, I'm walking and it's, this was like the fourth time and it was, I, I remember vividly, it was like right after he shaved his head for something and he's like in this thing with a hood and I see him and I did this stupid involuntary thing where you see someone you know, you give him a little nod. Oh, like you're the, like, hey, what's up? Hey. And he just like, he as he's moving, he's like locked mm -hmm. eyes. And I'm like, I don't know if he's mad at me because <laughs> he's always got like a very serious expression <laughs> on his face while he's out. And I'm like, I don't know if he's mad at me or if he's doing that thing that I do where I'm like, how do, do I, I know, know this person? person? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah. I can't believe you met Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Five times. Five times. I've met, me. I've met Josh Groban like three times. Oh, really? Uh, he used to, I won't say the restaurant, but I worked at a restaurant that he would frequent. Yeah. And he would just sit at the bar oh, and, wow. uh, I would be at the bar like folding, mm -hmm. uh, roll-ups or something. Yeah. And he'd be right there and I would, he'd get the food and I'd mm -hmm. be like, Everything tastes all right. It's like, oh yeah, it's great. It's great. This place is great. And he would just, he would open the door a little bit for conversation. Love that. No, there were three celebrities that I met on multiple occasions. Uh, Joe Jonas would come into my old restaurant. I won't say the name of it yeah. on multiple occasions. And one time he actually did bring his wife, Sophie, um, and his daughter. They were like, the nanny's going to be here soon. Can you help carry the stroller in? <laughs> so I'm carrying the stroller and their daughter also was wearing like a Gucci sweatshirt. And I was yeah. just sitting there. I was like, this child is wearing my rent right yeah. now. <laughs> it was hilarious. No, they were so sweet. Um, him, Sean Mendes, I met twice. Second time he came up behind me and asked me, excuse me, where's the bathroom? So it was, oh God, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like we really connected. And then the third, Michael Rappaport, the um, yeah. comedian. Yeah, yeah. He would come into my old restaurant quite frequently. He was always shopping in Soho. And every time I would see him, like he remembered me. He'd be like, I was like, what'd you get today? He was always buying lots of sneakers. 
he had really good taste in fashion. Yeah. So I would always be like, show me what you got. I got to see all the goods. He was very like personable, which I yeah. loved. He's he's one of my dad's favorite uh, comedic comedic mm-hmm. actors. I don't think I don't think my dad watches his stand up. I don't think he even does that much stand up anymore. I don't, but every yeah. time he shows up in something, oh yeah, it's always like, oh, he's great. Well, the funny thing was, I was sitting there the first time I met him. I was like, I know this guy. How do I know him? And I texted my dad. He's like, he literally plays Phoebe, one of Phoebe's boyfriends mm-hmm. on Friends. And yep. I was like, oh, he's the cop. It mm-hmm. took me a second to realize that. Round two. Round two. Round two. Ready, Bentley? <laughs> He's like, why don't I get a drink? Uh, there's cat wine. Th- is that actually a thing? I think so. I've seen, like, dog wine. That I've seen, and I'm considering getting it for my golden retriever at some point. Um, oh, yeah, no, I miss him. Yeah, I was offering Liam another drink, a guest that I had on, mm-hmm. pardon me, on Friday, mm-hmm. and I'm like... I'm sure Bentley would love a drink, but I can't because that's not how cats work. And he's like, well, they have cat wine. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, maybe maybe I'll get cat wine. <laughs> Do you want cat wine? No, he wants real wine. Look at it. Just look at this stud. This you, is, yeah. I don't know if the camera can see him right now. He is I, a stud. I don't think so. But he will, he'll jump up on someone's lap soon enough. No, I think you probably saw him earlier in the episode. He is the most gorgeous cat I've ever met. Yeah. I don't even think I said hello to you first. I think I, I said hello to you and I directly ran over to him to give him a pat on the head. Because I was like, he is just adorable. You, I believe it, it went exactly like you walked in. Hey, do I get to meet the cat? <laughs> do I get to, where is he? What's his name again? See. I was always told, don't be that annoying girl at parties that's like, oh my God, I love dogs and cats. But I am that girl. It's the correct response. Everyone loves animals. And anyone who tries to pretend like they don't, they're be- they're wasting their life. They're I wasting know. their time. No, I'm like, that just makes you look like mean when you're just like, I don't want to go near your dog. I'm here for the party. I'm like, no, I'm here to pet the dog. Yeah. I live in New York in a small little apartment. My golden retriever's out in Bucks County. <laughs> I go to parties that have pets to see the pets. Yeah, of course. Why would you go to see your friends? Yeah. That's stupid. Well, I was, I, I, I actually, I went to a birthday party for this person. Uh, I, I did a web series with a few people and got to know some of their friends. Mm-hmm. And there was a time where I was seeing them relatively often. Mm-hmm. And one of the girls in the group said, hey, it's so-and-so's birthday. We're having a party. Mm-hmm. Come over. Yeah. And I misread the text and I thought it was the dog's birthday party. <laughs> and I was like, I am in. I will be there 100%. And I, I walk, already know where this is going. I wa- Well, the dog was there, thankfully. But I walk in and then there's this girl who's wearing a birthday girl sash and a birthday crown. And I walk in with a gift for the dog. I knew it. I, I knew in- that was what was going to happen. <laughs> I walk in with like a little like bag of like dog treats. I knew exactly where this was heading. And and I'm so happy with the end result. Yeah. And it was like, hey, birthday, birthday girls over there. They're putting gifts over there. And I'm like, birthday girl, uh, person, human, human birthday person. Um, this, no, sorry. Uh, this was, this was for, this is for the dog. Um, just cause I love her and, oh and. My God. And missed her. And I I played it off, thankfully. And they were like, oh, that's so sweet. You didn't need to do that. And I'm like, nice. Cool. Cool save. Neat. Honestly, you know what? In her book, it probably gave you more brownie points. Yeah. Like, if I think if I had a dog and, like, a guy that I invited to my party did that, I'd be like, he's so sweet. God. It was. I would. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that that was the result. And then I spent the party on the, on the floor with the dog. Love that. Yeah. No, that's literally me all the time. It, it, I remember there was a guy once that I was like dating, like casually, but he had the world's cutest dog. Mm. And I spent more time with that dog than I did with him, I think. Yeah. What kind of dog? It was a golden retriever. Beautiful. Of course I did. Beautiful. <laughs> of course I did. Yeah. You have a golden retriever at home? Yeah. Otto. He's the Otto. one I'm always posting on Instagram. Fantastic. Yeah. No, he's. I love a good dog. He is a crackhead. And that yeah. is why I love him. How old? Oh my God. How old? He's going to be. Gosh. Okay. He was born in 2019. Three, four. So he'll be, oh my God, he'll be four this year. That Aww. makes me sad. Oh God. no, he's still a puppy. He, he is such a baby. He's such a baby. Every time I go home, cause I only see him like every couple months when I go and visit my parents. 
like I'll sit on the couch to watch TV. And in his mind, he's like five pounds. Mm hmm. I mean, he's slim shady. He's like, he's skinny for a golden retriever, <laughs> but he's, he's big. Yeah. I'll be sitting on the couch and he'll just come over. And this is my voice I use for him. He'll be like, I'm just, I'm just going to scooch him right here. I'm just going to sit right on your lap. And like, he'll lay on my lap like a baby. Mm-hmm. And he just sits there. And it's so funny because, like, my parents sit there. They're like, oh, my God, he's so annoying. Like, why do – like, we can't believe he does this. But then they encourage it later. They'll right. be like, why doesn't he want to cuddle with us? And I'm like, make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, you sit there and you yell at him. Like, oh, my God. He's crazy, though. Like, we'll leave him alone for, like, five minutes. I, I'll never forget. I walked downstairs into the kitchen one time, and he was asleep on the kitchen counter. I don't even know how he got up there. He is a cat. And my parents yeah. were like, it, this happened multiple times. It wasn't even just once. Because I remember my roommate was with me the one time and I sent her a picture. I was like, girl, look at what just happened. She's like, why is he standing on the kitchen counter? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. He's insane. But he's on brand for our family. So yeah. <laughs> that's great. There's a, we, we had a lot of big dogs growing mm-hmm. up. Um, we had a St. Bernard and a Great Dane mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. And... Hannah, uh, Great Dane, Mm -hmm. Harlequin, so black and white spots. People (gasps) thought she was like a a Dalmatian, but she was like big. And she thought she was a lap dog too. So Mm -hmm. she would just, hey, bud. She would just. He's like, I want a margarita. You can come over here. Go hang out with dad. She would. I'm calling him over. No, he doesn't want to hang out with me. Okay. She would, uh, she would, we had low couches, so she would just like walk past her head, would move past like a shark fin, and then she would just like <laughs> drop her butt on your lap, and then she would just stare. And it was oh, like, yeah. this is where I'm sitting now mm-hmm. on you, and oh, it was yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's my favorite thing yeah. in the world. Listen, I love gigantic dogs, mm-hmm. more to love, bigger yeah. hearts. Yeah, she also ate my birthday cake, which was annoying. Oh, Otto did that recently. He ate an entire chocolate cake. My dad's a really amazing baker, and he made a chocolate cake. I forget what it it must have been Christmas or something. I don't think it was this past year, but it was like a year ago probably. And we come downstairs, and it was cool. Like Otto ate the entire cake, so he had to go get his stomach like pumped. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, dogs and chocolate. No. Done done mix. Hey, bud. No. He did that. I remember our old golden ate an entire meatloaf. We're pretty sure one of my dogs ate my mom's old engagement ring. Oh. Oh, that was a, an interesting time. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, no, that was bad. That so was bad. You, We're not entirely sure if it was Lucy. It you, say, you say pretty sure. I'm guessing you didn't get it back. We never got it back, but you know what was cute? So obviously, so what sucked was my mom lost her engagement ring, but then she also lost her mother's ring as well, which was very oh. terrible. Um, she doesn't know if she was doing the dishes, what, whatever. Um that happened and then my dad was like obviously we need to get you a new ring and she went and looked and she's like i don't want a new one i want my old one back and then after a while she was like no i'll I'll get a new one i'll never forget uh my dad came home he was like girls come downstairs i want to show you something that you missed the first time and then he got down on one knee he's like will you marry me again (laughs) oh it was actually the sweetest thing in the world my mom was just like laughing she's like you're so stupid (laughs) like just like you're so silly it was honestly so sweet that's super cute they had my parents have like the greatest relationship and I always look up to them so much for that. I mean, not only like with each other, but even like with me and my siblings, which I respect so much. I love that. Yeah. I love, I love hearing, cause it seems like it's rarer and rarer these days that, mm-hmm. uh, parents are still together. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously like you live and you learn from your parents, and their relationships and like you, you learn like, okay, like this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Obviously. Um, I think the thing I've always respected the most is that like even through all of like the hard times, they've always been able to work through everything, Mm -hmm. which I think is something that I commend my parents for. And it has also inspired me like as I get older, like hard times are normal when you're dating and it's something that you just have to work through. And if you can work through it, that just means that your relationship is strong enough to withstand that through time. Yeah. We're getting deep now. We are. (laughs) It's, it's so true though. I mean, Mm -hmm. my, my parents went through the whole stock market crash in 2008, oh my God, lost, yeah. lost a business. We had to move in with my grandparents oh, for wow. a little bit. Um, like the hardest of times it's, you know, and, and I don't know, I don't like to say that we had it hard because 
then people like to think, oh, you had it harder than everyone else, or you think you did. But like, but that does, this, but that's mm. also not to say like you shouldn't invalidate what you went through, right? right. And right. it's yeah, and it's just it's it was definitely not fun. I mean, I remember when we moved in uh, to my grandparents, it was just it was very quiet, mm -hmm. and we were all just like not having a good time. And that's hard. I'm sorry. Yeah, I never okay. knew that. That's okay. It's I mean we we bounced back. Um, mm -hmm. My dad's at a great job now. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up not living there too long because I was off to college in like three, four months. Oh, okay. So, that. oh, wow. So it was late in high school. Yeah. You. Well, because okay. the whole, the you know, I was I was in the Lehman Trilogy. So I, I mm -hmm. know a little bit about when it happened, but also because I was there mm -hmm. and then, you know, needed to learn about it. Uh, it happened in like 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And that's when I graduated uh, high school in 2008. Mm -hmm. So... All of that kind of cascading thing. We held on to the business as long as we could, mm -hmm. but we had it on a land contract, mm -hmm. which basically means you don't get a mortgage involved, you don't get a bank involved. It's basically if I were to buy, say, your business from you, you and I have a contract. We shake yeah. hands. I agree to hit I agree to pay you X amount a yes. month for a certain number of months. And the stipulation is if I miss even one payment, you can take the business back. Oh, and really? keep all the money that I paid you. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's it's not a gamble, but it's more of a gamble than a mortgage. Because you default okay. on the mortgage, the bank starts going through a process and takes your house, takes your company, et cetera. I mean, it does work out in your favor, though, because then at least you, like, God forbid something did go wrong, then you know you're getting your business back. Right. And that it's in good hands. Right. Which I honestly would prefer at that point. Well, we were the buyers of the business. Oh, you were the buyers of the yeah. business. Okay. And so we missed we missed a few payments. And that, oh, you know, that's why okay, yeah. and that's why this happened. I so understand. to this guy's credit, and he wasn't the best guy, but he at least didn't take it back after one payment. Mm -hmm. I think he he tried to work with us a little bit, but yeah. he did end up taking it back. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's hard. And I'm sorry. I never knew you went through that. That's all right. Yeah. We, we, we keep it light. Cause... Now, when you were in Lehman Trilogy and like, obviously, like you, you said, you know enough about what was happening. Like, did you tap into that or no? It wasn't really necessary for like my, my role was so small. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I needed. Hey, never say that. <laughs> my, <laughs> it His was, role was important. <laughs> I was, I was, I mean, look, and I don't say that disparagingly. Like I, no, I was I on Broadway. It was a very cool thing to do. And, and I look at it as like a catalyst or a stepping stone onto the next thing. No, it's but, incredible. but it wasn't an acting heavy performance. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was more like mm -hmm. I was, I was helping fill out the scene and, yeah. and make the whole stage work as mm -hmm. like a final product. Right. No. And I think that that is something that like was always so encouraged to me from a very young age was that like because like when you're in high school obviously everything seems like it's the end of the world and I remember like people would get upset if they didn't get certain parts or whatever it might be and my high school director was so great about telling us like we are not you're not the ensemble we are a full comp and these are the principal actors we are a full company uh -huh. we work together as a moving part and she was so great about like inspiring each of us to like really develop a character and like make choices and stuff like that. Oh my God. I remember somebody in the on, in the ensemble of anything goes decided that they were narcoleptic and would randomly pass out on stage for no reason. And it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. But like even in a college too, like it was the same thing. Like I like so many of my friends and I would always say like some of our favorite work were the times where like maybe I don't want to say like our roles were like smaller, but like we were in the ensemble or like we had just more liberty to do whatever we could. And I feel like that was the time that I was able to experiment more and grow more as a human being. Yeah. And that was always so special. But also too, at the end of the day, it's just recognizing that like you are a part of like a very, it, it's not just about you. It's about the entire piece and what you serve to it. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing that I've learned, especially as I've gotten older. And I respect that so much more. So it's like whenever I get also too, like, I mean, you get into the real world, you don't work as often as you used to when you were younger. I mean, you go to summer camp, you do your high school shows, you know, you're going to do them because literally all you, all you have to do is sign up to audition. Yeah. And then as you get older, it doesn't work that way anymore. No. So you start to appreciate anything and everything that comes your way. How, uh, how often would you say you audition these days? I keep a log. So, um, I started my log 
while I was away from my Christmas show, actually, I was like, it'd be interesting to see like everything I submit for, whether it's in person appointments, um, online or just video submissions, write down what the show is, where it's at feedback, comments, whatever, and whether or not I got a callback, whatever it might be. Uh I have submitted at this time for about 60 projects in three and a half months. Yeah. Maybe more than that. Probably in the seventies at this point. Um, a lot of those were in person because this was the first year that I did in person EPAs and ECCs. I'm EMC. Um, I would get up at, <laughs> I'd set my alarm for 4.30 to leave at 5 a.m. to catch the train to get to AEA building at Oof. 6 a.m. And what I would do, I, I, well, the first day, time I showed up, I got up at 3 a.m., did my hair and my makeup, and I showed up and I sat there at 6 a.m., dressed, ready to go for three hours. And I was like, this was not a good idea. <laughs> so after that, I was like, okay, we're going to take like, essentially like a duffel bag with me. So every morning I would wake up, didn't do anything. Literally, I would sleep in what I was going to wear to the AEA building. And I would wake up at 10 of before I knew my train was going to get there, grab my bag with all my stuff in it, head over to AEA, get my name on the list. And then I would go to the bathroom and I would like do my hair and my makeup. And then I would sleep in a chair. And if any of y'all are actors, you know, those chairs are not comfortable. No, no. And I would just wait and see if they would call my name. And more often than not, I was always able to get seen only twice. I was not seen. Um, and it was actually, it was a pretty, there were pros and cons to it. I mean, just because it, you never know. I mean, this was definitely like a learning period for me for sure this year. Cause I never did the EPA ECC audition scene. So it was kind of like a trial and error run just to see how it went. But overall it was great just to meet these people in person. I mean, yeah. I got to meet people that I've wanted to meet for years, which was incredible. And I got seen for projects I probably wouldn't have gotten seen for unless I had an agent. So it was incredible. Would Is that a uh, habit or a routine or something that you think you would continue to do? Or are you going to um, pull back and try to change gears a little bit? A little bit, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing I definitely learned these past couple months is the importance of taking care of yourself and your mental health. I mean, I was losing so much sleep. And then on top of it, not only was I doing these auditions, but then I would be going to, I had two jobs at the time, technically three actually. And I'd be doing all of those on the side, getting home super late at night from work and then getting whatever amount of rest that I could to go and do the same thing the next day. And at some point I lost it. I was just like, I need to take a break. This is not what I need to be doing to myself. This is not a life that I deserve or want. And I remember I went home for a couple of days to see my family. And after that, I was like, we are taking a break and we are going to prioritize our mental health for a little bit. And the minute I started doing that was the minute I started doing better in the audition room too, because no longer was it about like, I need to get the job. I need to get the job. It was about, am I here because I'm passionate about the project or am I here just because I need a job? Right. And that made a world of a difference. And that's what ultimately led me to getting work, which has been incredible. No. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. It's, it's tough because I feel like we as actors were told what you need to do to get the job by people who might not necessarily be qualified to tell us what we need to do to get the job. Yeah. Uh, I know I have my frustrations with the education that I received. Mm -hmm. There were definitely things that were lacking things that were flat out incorrect yeah uh and i think the best thing that i did was i found a good like coach out here Mm -hmm. who was able to kind of base not water them down but like focus on the things that actually were important Mm -hmm. like i remember uh having someone say if you ever do a self-tape audition you need to do this 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 and then i started working with this guy and he's like just make sure they can hear you and see you I love that. And yeah, and I'm like, but and you know, I'm I'm working against like my instincts, which mm-hmm. weren't instincts, they were just things that I had learned that I like gripped onto too tightly. It's like, but don't I need to like make sure that I have like two lights that are hitting me from different angles and make sure that the background is completely clear mm-hmm. and like if there's like a nail in it, I need to like remove the nail and patch it up and paint. And he's like, God. No, no one cares. And then I remember seeing an audition that the I I forget the kids is it Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things 
The kid with the black curly hair, the like oh, one of the leads. Oh, yes. No, I know exactly. Wait, no, not the guy. Yes. The, the, the kid. Not, the, not the guy who's in Sweeney Todd right now, right? Gatton? No, no, the other one. The oh, one with the oh. darker hair. Yes, no, I know exactly who you're the talking one about. That, yes. The one that, <laughs> spoiler alert, the one that dates Eleven. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> Um, if you haven't watched, mm -hmm. um, I remember seeing his audition video for Stranger Things. He did it on his bed wrapped up in a blanket because he was because he was that. sick, but he still wanted to do it. Oh my god! Wait. Yeah, that's... and and you can see like he's he's in a he's a kid. He's in a kid's bedroom. He's got like action figures on the uh, bed frame, like headboard with shelves thing, and he's got posters. And he just like put probably a webcam or a, a iPhone five. Cause this is so long ago now on a stack of books and record. And it's, and that was one of those moments where I realized, Oh, it really doesn't matter. No. Like it might, like you might see someone who has a lot going on in the background and it's, mm -hmm. it's distracting. But as long as you just make some kind of effort to make yourself seen and heard. Mm -hmm. No, it's true. And I, and I, and I mean that literally like just make sure that, the voice, your voice sounds good. Yeah, no, it's sure, true. And make sure they can see your face. And like, that's it. It's funny you say that though, too, because I think about like the jobs I have booked. I literally booked them at times when I thought I wasn't going to because my either my tapes were really bad or my auditions were really bad. And a great exam example. <laughs> can you hear me? I'm making sure I'm heard. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see you. And you can see me, yeah. yes. Um, no, uh, it was for my friend's audition, actually. So my initial callback was all self-tapes, and I did it while I was on contract out in the middle of nowhere um, in Illinois. And then I got a callback, and it was like right when I had just gotten back to the city for my Christmas show. And a week later, I tested positive for COVID and was stuck in my room, and I lost my voice entirely to the point that like I couldn't even speak. Like you nothing came out. Uh -huh. So I emailed them and I told them I was like, I hope you're not asking me to sing because I can talk. There's no way anything else is coming out of my mouth. And they're like, no, that's totally fine. And we did it over Zoom. I did all the sides for Rachel, Phoebe, and Monica with a terrible cold. And I sat there and I called my parents. I was like, I don't know how it went. <laughs> Who knows anymore? <laughs> I went to the bathroom. I took a shower, sat down, was like just getting on with my day. All of a sudden I realized I had a missed call and a voicemail that was saying to me, Hey, sorry um, that you missed this, but I just want to let you know, um, you're getting an offer to do the friends tour as the swing. And I, I was like, what? I think my roots grew. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And, uh, but, but it is true. Like, cause they just, they knew how passionate I was about the project and they saw that I understood the characters and what I brought to the table. And that was all that mattered at the end of the day. Cause they yeah. had also seen me prior and they, that meant more to them. And that was the biggest like learning lesson I feel like for me. I mean, I did a self tape for a production of Mama Mia, um, that, was super last minute. I had terrible lighting, barely knew what I was doing. Didn't do all the character work. Right. I put it on YouTube. I didn't get the job. I got 10,000 views on YouTube in the year 2021 when no one even goes on YouTube. Right. And I was like, what is going on that people, first of all, why are people Googling this? <laughs> <laughs> but second of all, why is this happening? <laughs> it was so funny. That's crazy. I've, I definitely, I, not auditions, but acting work, like in my acting class mm -hmm. on the days where I was sick or, mm -hmm. uh, there was a day that, uh, I found out that my grandmother passed away. Oh my God. I'm so and, sorry. Thank you. And I went in to my class and it was mostly scene work. So you mm -hmm. had scene partners. Sometimes there were three of you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was me and my scene partner, Johnny, mm -hmm. and we do our scene and, I didn't mention anything because when something like that happened, yeah. Happened. I was like, what are you doing? Um, I, I was like, what's happening? What is he doing? Just taking the Bentley fur off of my mouth. He is a little baby. Yeah, he's cute. Um, Sorry, tell your story. Yeah, yeah. He, so I didn't tell anyone because when something happens like that mm -hmm. it's as soon as i say it that's when it's hard to that's when it's hard to keep it together oh 100 um so i didn't say anything and i did the scene and my teacher's like 
So, I mean, that was, that was interesting. You definitely were more calm and more open, but are you okay? And then I oh said it God. and then he's like, okay, so that makes a lot of sense. But <laughs> what ended up happening was I was more with Johnny mm -hmm. in the scene mm -hmm. and I was more present and I didn't put anything on it because mm -hmm. I had no energy. And you had no choice but to just let it go. Yeah. And so that was, that was a big lesson, mm -hmm. um, that I didn't expect. That's amazing. And yeah. And just, and mm -hmm. you know, I, he also, uh, acting teacher, I've mentioned acting teacher like six times, Tom, mm -hmm. uh, if you're out there, um, <laughs> he talked about, I started taking his class when I was, I think 24 or 25 oh, wow. and I had frustrations and I was trying to like force and push and mm -hmm. like do things the way that I had been taught. And, um, he's like, you're, you're just, you're trying too hard. You just need to be like easier and just oh like, Oh my God. Yeah. And he's like, a big part of that is you're young. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, you've got all this young guy need Energy. to prove yourself, need to, need to, yeah. it's any, he, and he called it stuff. He didn't really have a word mm -hmm. for it. Wait, um, I am so sorry to interrupt. Do you mind if we use the bathroom really quickly? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. Here, we'll just pause and then yeah. come back. Yeah, sorry about that. No. Do you know where it's at? Oh, yes, right yeah. there. I'll be right back. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Bentley sitting on my lap. Bentley sitting on your lap can help you solve all of your problems. If you don't believe me, I've got Bentley fur on my lap. I've got Bentley fur in my drink. I've got Bentley fur on my napkin, which inevitably is going to put Bentley fur on my mustache. Bentley fur. I put that stuff on everything. Thank you. That was pretty stupid. I really hope that no one hears that. It's okay, I definitely didn't do a fake commercial for Bentley for uh while you were gone. Wait, are you kidding me? I don't know. Wait, you're gonna you have to record it. You're, you're gonna I didn't no, it's too much effort to turn everything off for like Is this gonna seconds. be kept in the episode? That's the real question. I don't edit these in the sense that I take stuff out. So Seriously? So I'm so Hi early everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I just so. went to the bathroom. <laughs> So earlier I, uh, I hit record and then I like hit record on all the things. The only thing that I might cut out is I might start like 30 seconds or 60 seconds into the recording when my ass isn't to the back of the camera. Or Got it. Um, Got it. Love that. But yeah, but like I just, it's, it's just going to be one long thing. And I, all I'm doing is I'm going to cut to different camera angles. But oh the, but, damn! Okay. But the audio, the audio should be all. So all my douchey comments will be in here. Great, love that. Yeah, there's one time that I edited at the request of my guest. Um, he was a teacher, and uh, he didn't want any of the times that he used a swear word to be in there. That's fair. And he, that's fair. And fortunately. You know, we get to the end of the episode. We did like an hour and a half, and he's like, "Hey, I think I swore like two or three times. Can you?" get those out. And I'm like, sure. And then, so I went back and I listened to the whole episode in real time, uh, twice because I like, you had to make sure it was out. Yeah. yeah. And I like, I was in and out because I'm like, I just had this conversation an hour ago and now I need to listen to it again. Mm -hmm. And he only swore like three times, but like I, I cut out good those. Yeah. But that was fair. Like he no, was, he was protecting his job. Uh, no, obviously. I mean, it's so hard. I mean, like, I feel like these days, especially like we're all so open and honest on social media to a fault. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I, I respect the fact that like there are people in this world that still want to keep privacy and things to themselves. Cause like you're allowed to have your own life and you don't need to share it all over right. the world for people to see, you know, yeah. I'm sorry though. I cut off your earlier conversation about, um, like you have all this young energy, like you need to prove yeah. yourself. Well, all I was, I'm on my way, wherever I was, in that story, it was on the way to the point of now that I'm in my thirties, mm -hmm. just auditions and stuff. And like doing Lehman trilogy, it was, mm -hmm. 
a noticeable difference of just like, just feel more relaxed. It's true. I feel like that's a big thing that I learned. Oh my God. I never told you this story. So my sophomore year of college, I had a professor who I just like, we, we just didn't click. You know how like you have some teachers who you either vibe with or you don't. I have friends that I vibe with and (laughs) friends that I don't vibe with. You're right. Exactly. They're just people in this world you don't connect with, or maybe you just don't understand. And this was somebody who I, I still have nothing but respect for them, obviously, and what they did, but I just personally didn't work well with them. And it was somebody who ultimately told me that I wasn't going to be successful and that I, they kept telling me that I was working too hard and, but they were never getting into the detail of what they meant. They were like, you're working too hard. You're trying too hard. And I was like, what, what does that mean? Like, cause even at one point I remember they gave me a song at one point that was supposed to be like, I thought it was supposed to be super comedic, but the point, the point of the exercise was actually that they wanted me to do less. And I did not know that. So when I got up to do it for them, they were like, I I don't like what you're doing. You're making this way too hard. Like you need to learn to let go and find your freedom. Mm. And that was very hard at first because at that point in time, like they kept saying that, but they weren't telling me like for what reason it wasn't like you're trying to be perfect. You're trying to give me exactly what I want. It was just that you're trying too hard. It wasn't until my second semester, sophomore year, because this was also the year too that we got like evaluated too to like move forward into like, um, more advanced acting classes and stuff like that. And I remember my second semester, I came back and I really didn't know what to expect. And I went into my next like couple of classes and I was like, you know what? It's really not that deep. It's me playing pretend. I had a friend actually who would always tell me like, she was always so positive and so happy in class. And like, was always so inspiring every time she was on stage like such a joy to watch and I remember asking her once I was like what's what's the secret what are you doing and she's like I love my imagination and I love to play pretend she's like it is not that deep and the minute she said that to me I was like oh my god like the whole reason I started doing this in the first place I mean like you're four years old you're playing house with your friends you're like I'm mom you're dad you're the baby and Mm -hmm. you all believe it And I feel like the older we get, we forget that that's like ingrained in us from a young age. Like we are able to completely transform into other characters and wholeheartedly believe it. And we don't do it because we have to. We do it because it's fun. Uh And that was something I lost. And the minute I tapped back into that was the minute everything clicked for me and everything changed. And I noticed a significant difference. And like I booked my first... um, like equity contract that gave me my EMC card and I booked my first summer stock and my first main stage show at college. Like everything changed after that point. And I realized I was like, my perfectionist personality was what was getting in the way the entire time. The idea that I needed to please other people Mm -hmm. was what got in the way. And it was also like, not only just for work, but just in general in life. Like I was somebody who, and even to this day, this is something I still work through. Like I will give people the benefit of the doubt until they give me a reason not to. And I still believe that every person means well at heart. Like nobody intentionally wants to hurt others unless it's, I don't know, like unless they're just a mean person. Um, yeah. But no, I don't think anyone sits there. Is like, I am intentionally trying to hurt this other human being. Right. No one ever goes in with that. And that's given me grace and clarity, but it don't, but I've also learned Like, no, I also have to recognize if somebody does hurt me or if something is upsetting me and acknowledge that to move forward as opposed to just saying that it didn't happen. Yeah. Giving, giving people the benefit of the doubt and maybe acknowledging that Mm -hmm. they didn't intend to do it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that you didn't feel hurt or taken advantage Mm -hmm. of or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Yeah. no. And I think that was the biggest life lesson was like, I don't need to be perfect. I just need to be myself. And quite frankly, if people can accept that, that doesn't mean that there's a problem with me. That just means that they can't accept me. Yeah. And that's their choice. And I have, I can respect it. And that's it. Yeah. Some people don't figure that out either. 
And that's it's hard. It is. It's well, it's it's not an easy thing. It's it's one of the hardest things. I think finding who you are and being happy and being okay mm -hmm. with some people accepting you, some people not mm -hmm. is one of the hardest things to figure out. Especially in our profession too, where it's like you want to be the person that they like when you come into the room. Well, yeah, that gets us jobs. That gets it's, us jobs. It's, <laughs> it's, it's that weird, mm -hmm. you don't need to be liked to work in finance. You, you just don't. need to, You just need to be good at math or numbers or, it's true. or just, kind of lucky with the stock market, I guess. You mm -hmm. don't need you don't need to be liked to be a doctor. You no. just need to know a lot about medicine or be good at surgery. I it, think it helps, but <laughs> we we I think we as entertainers, we kind of really need to be liked or already famous enough to bring in money. Yeah. I think the biggest thing, I mean, somebody once told me in an email offer, they were like the they they actually told me in my initial offer, like they wrote a very sweet like letter, but they said part of the reason that like, they said most importantly, the reason we are making you this offer is because we called so-and-so and they had nothing but amazing things to say about you and that you were so fun to work with. And even, and they actually, this company ended up rehiring me and they said they're like, you were such a joy to work with. And that, and not even necessarily getting the role, but like I remember even telling my parents like when I got the offers and I would like show them the emails I got and they were like, it, it means so much that we know at the end of the day that like our children are good people yeah, and that they're people that like are spreading kindness and happiness to others. And that in itself always meant more to me than anything. Like I I've got like, obviously I've gotten like offers in the past where it's just like, we're making you an offer. Here's the contract. Like, but yeah. getting that was so personal and probably one of the sweetest things I've ever received from somebody. And that really meant a lot to me. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, like, Everything in life is temporary, but you want to know that it you're leaving like good, uh, good in the yeah. world leaving, once you do leave. Leaving it a little bit better than when you found it. No, it's it's yeah. true. It, it, exactly. I think that's the biggest thing for sure. Mm -hmm. That's it's I've I've you know whether I like it or not I've done a lot more work in the service industry, bartending, serving than I mm -hmm. have in entertainment. But it's I I pride myself on how good I am at it, mm -hmm. and you know I've been doing it for. 13, 14, 15 years, depending on when you want to count oh when God. I started. It's been bartending since uh, I was 19. I'm 32 Really? Now. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait, I didn't even know you could bartend at 19. Uh, so in Michigan, you can be 18 and you can serve and 21 and drink. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm, I, well, so here's the, th I think it's 18 and serve and they literally mean like as a server, as a waiter. Yeah. I'm pretty sure to be behind the bar, I needed to be 21, but they... The owner was like, "No, you're good. You, we are gonna have you behind the bar." We're gonna so, edit that out. No, <laughs> he's 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 not the owner anymore, so it's fine. <laughs> okay. So so he can't lose anything. True. Um, but also, I won't say where it was. Yeah, but it was in Michigan, in Utica. Everybody in, can take guesses. Yeah, on where it was. <laughs> and this is an early episode, so it's only gonna be friends. They're all gonna be like, I you know, know what? Yeah. Oh my god, my sister goes to Michigan State. I'll ask her. I'll be like, what bars are around there that are popular? <laughs> Fortunately, Lansing and Utica are about two hours apart. So okay, I know nothing about Michigan. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I did see you post about your sister like two weeks ago. She was in an athletic jersey of some kind. I don't know what sport. Oh, yes. No, she's on the rowing team mm. uh, for MSU. She was actually yeah. a soccer player growing up, but she got scouted for the rowing team, and she wanted to do that instead. Um, she loved Michigan State, though, just because it, they also had a really great program for what she wanted to study. Environmental engineering. She's so yeah. smart. It's ridiculous. Um, so she she goes there. But yeah, they had her do like um, those like gifts now. They like took like videos of them. So she did one where yeah. she was like doing like a dance or something. I was like, that's my <laughs> sister. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. No, she's super talented. It's good. That's uh, that's where my grandpa went. And <gasps> Really? Yeah. And I went to Wayne State, which is right in Detroit. Oh, um, oh I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. So I, you know, in terms of the Big Ten, I was always, I always lean Michigan State instead of U of M because mm -hmm. there's that like little rivalry. And then my dad leans towards OSU, Ohio State, because he's born in Ohio, mm. which is a nightmare mm -hmm. because I'm related to someone who was from Ohio, oh, which is just awful. <laughs> Shout out Ohio, all of you. <laughs> Your state is boring. <laughs> I don't think 
anybody from Michigan would sit here that oh my god, this is gonna make us look so mean. Like, I don't think anyone from Michigan is gonna sit here though and be like, my state is amazing. <laughs> Have you been to Michigan? Only briefly when I was. My state is amazing. <laughs> is it actually? It really, honestly, Aww. like Michigan summers are above all the other ones. Really? Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. Nice. We did, mm -hmm. me and my friends in college, we did a like tubing where you mm -hmm. like get on t inner tubes and go down the river. Oh, that's we did nice. uh, Rifle River tubing. It was beautiful. Rifle River? What's it's, that? it's just the name of the river. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I was picturing something else entirely. I no, was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, it's just, it's just the name of the river. And we're Love just, that. we're just coasting down it for like six hours and beautiful mountain landscapes, Aww. Lake Michigan, the, the great, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sand bear dunes, great bear dunes, sand dunes, great bear know. sand dunes. I don't know. It's Michigan mm -hmm. is beautiful. It is beautiful. I've only been briefly, and it was because during college auditions, actually, for U of Mish. Yeah. Yeah. No, when I first, that was the first time I had ever been there. It was actually beautiful. Um, it's just so, I actually love that you're like, you're like, my state is beautiful. I feel like so many people always like trash their hometowns, especially people that like move to New York specifically. They're like, I wanted to get away from home. And I'm like, yeah. I love my hometown. Yeah. I love my parents. I had a great neighborhood full of tons of amazing people who were like family to me. Like I always have a great time when I go home. I mean, it was a gorgeous area. I mean, nothing but respect. Mm -hmm. I, I go home. My parents moved into a, a newer house in lockdown so like a year and a half ish ago mm. and they moved into a house that has bedrooms for all of us themselves mm. my sister and i and that. when they were moving i was home a lot more than my sister was mm -hmm. and so my mom's like you're here more often which bedroom do you want i'm like i want the one that faces the lake oh you're the favorite right now yeah. well i'm just <laughs> home more often no no i'm the, no i'll say this and if my parents listen to this they know it's the truth <laughs> so my Younger sister's away at college. My older sister lives in London. Oh, so she's far, far. Yeah, she's far, far. So she doesn't come home often. Well, as much as she can, obviously. Right. My parents actually travel quite a bit to go and see her. They were there a little less than a month ago, actually, to go and visit her. And they are, had... they, are they retired? No. <laughs> no. Um, like, where are they getting all this time from? Well, my, my dad is an entrepreneur who cones his own business. And, like, a lot of his work is remote anyway. So he makes his own hours. So, yeah, it's great. Um, and then my mom's a nurse, but she, as she's gotten older, oh, that sounded so mean. No, I love you, mom. Uh, no, she started doing um, like overnights at the hospital just so that she could do more hours in a day, but less days per week. So she could take more time off if she wanted to. So she yeah. works 24 hours, like one day or twice a week, depending on how often she's working. And then she has the rest of the time to herself, which is, oh, wow. which is nice. She, she likes it that way. It's so like one or two days yeah. and then five off. Yeah, literally. I she, would do that. No, she really likes it that way. And honestly, it is nice because then it gives her and my dad the luxury to be able to travel more, which has been yeah. great. Like me, all my sisters are out of the house at this point. So my parents have been living the life, honestly. Yeah. Like they go on so many trips. They're having so much fun. They get to go and they have friends that live out like in Florida. They go and visit them all the time. Like, they have the life, man. But they go and visit my sister in Florida. I mean, not Florida, <laughs> London. My sister's in Florida. Your sister's in Florida. They visit my sister in Sorry. Florida mm -hmm. before they go visit your sister in Yes, London. absolutely. Gosh, now I know where they are all the time. Why they're there so often. Jesus. Um, but no, so I'm, I don't want to say I'm the favorite, but I'm the one that like gets yeah. the most texted calls. And like my mom will just be like, I was thinking of coming to visit you this week. And I'm like. For what reason? She's like, just cause. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> nice. Like, like it's no, it, it honestly is very sweet though. Like I really do appreciate that I am close to my family. Yeah. Um, it's hard being away from my sisters and not seeing them as often, especially like my younger sister, she might be home for the summer, but I'm not going to be. So that, that is hard, but you learn to appreciate your time with your siblings more because of it. Yeah. For sure. I definitely, as I've gotten older, I've, I've made more of an effort to go home and, and spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think a little bit of it too is uh, in lockdown, I was home for oh my months. God, yes. I mean, I did, so we did lockdown, uh, it was it was an age. We did, <laughs> I, know. Uh, I, I had roommates back then, so it was me, my two roommates, okay. who are a couple, oh. and, then, and then my girlfriend like pseudo moved in. She kept her apartment in Brooklyn, but she brought like a, a 
She'd suitcase. like stay like over the overnight for like a couple days or something. Uh, two months. We were all in the apartment for about two months, and okay. then and then we all decided to go our separate ways. We all went to our like different corners of of the country. Uh, I went to Michigan. My best friend who I lived with, he, his family is in Western Michigan. Oh. His girlfriend, my other roommate, was in California. And then my girlfriend at the time went to Chicago. So we all spread out. Oh, wow. Okay. We were all hundreds of miles away from each other <laughs> after spending two months being like 24 inches away from each other <laughs> in this in this small. It was it was a it was an okay sized apartment, but it was a two bedroom mm -hmm. and we were four people. Mm -hmm. And so we were, we, it was, it was a lot. Uh, and we also were in like constant fight or flight mode because oh, yeah. this whole brand new thing was happening to us. Right. No. Um, but after that I spent like two or three months at home with my parents. Right. And I made, I made trips down to Chicago. She made trips up. So there was like breaks, but like yeah. I spent like three months at home and then I came back to New York and then I went back to Michigan and oh, wow. I think spending that much time home made me realize a little bit how much I like spending time oh, at home. That's sweet. Yeah. So last summer when everything is back and open and I'm mm -hmm. working again, I'm still at the job that I was at. Mm -hmm. I went home like every three or four weeks Oh wow! for like the weekend trip. Just that's so nice yeah. though. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I mean, also because I was working consistently for six months with friends, I did not have the luxury to be able to go home and see my family that often. So like, even when I finished that, I had like a couple weeks before I started my next contract. I went home for a very important, like, I say family. Um, it's essentially somebody who is family to me. It was my neighbor who like, literally like that entire family is my second family. Like mm -hmm. if anything ever happened to my family and it never will, but like they were our second family that also raised us. My right. own, there were a bunch of neighbors that I had growing up who essentially raised me and my siblings, which was amazing. And I'm so grateful for that. But I remember like going home and like being surrounded by all the people I grew up with. And I was just like something about it just like immediately like revitalized me after like months of like working so hard and like making sure like I saved all this money and like did everything right. Like I was just like you are the people that raised me and you were the reason that I was able to even do what I do. And that in itself was like the best reminder in the world to have. It, it was the right time for that. And that was amazing. Mm hmm. Uh, funny, the, you know, you said your parents are empty nesters at the moment. They are. Yeah. Uh, well, my, except for Otto, but. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> my parents. But he goes everywhere with them. <laughs> my parents are also empty nesters, except for the dogs and the cat. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they had me very young. They had me at uh, 22, 23. Pop off. And <laughs> now they're partying like they're in college. I love that. They, they, like, I go home for Christmas, and on Christmas Eve, we were at a bar at 11.30, mm -hmm. having Bloody Marys. I and, love this. And then we joined all of their, so they're, they're big in the boating community in, like, in the oh Macomb goodness. County, Lake St. Clair area. Mm -hmm. And so they know about 100 people mm -hmm. that are out on the water in the summer yeah. and all of those people hang out in the winter too. So we all went to a bar in Mount Clemens, Rec Bull, shout out Rec Bull. And <laughs> there were like 70 people just drinking at one in the afternoon on I Christmas Eve. And then we went and we did family stuff at night, but we all like, I was, I was probably a little bit too far gone for being around my grandparents and my <laughs> great aunt, great uncle. Um, you know, everyone's excited to see me because I've been living in New York and mm -hmm. they haven't seen me since last year. And mm. I just come in. And I'm like, hey, everyone. <laughs> I love that. Honestly, yeah. no, there has only been a handful of times. I think my parents have seen me that down bad. But the thing is, is like my parents, like they're the life of the party. And the older I've gotten, I've learned that about them. Um, but we were all at this wedding back in October. I think I was like five or six marks deep at this point. Who, who am I kidding? I was probably mixing alcohol at this point. Oof. And it was so much fun because they had like a live band and everything. And my, I call her my aunt Denise. It's actually 
my neighbor's aunt Denise, but she was also technically our aunt because second family. Second family. Um, but she always does this thing for some reason. Whenever we have like big parties or weddings, she grabs one of the napkins and starts like dancing with it, <laughs> and it's crazy. So she started this huge dance circle, and the wedding was big. It was like three hundred people. Oh wow! And I went and I got a drink, and I came back. I like shuffled, and I was like sipping in the corner. I was like, mm, "This is so much fun." And there's this huge dance circle, and my. <laughs> My Aunt Denise comes up to me. She throws the napkin at me and she just goes, and I'm like, oh, it's my turn. Okay, so I just turned to someone. And I think I was very drunk at this point. I was like, can you hold this for me? Thank you. And then I went into the center. I was like, what do I do? So I started, did you ever watch the videos of a Dua Lipa on tour? Back no, like, not not this. <laughs> not, the, not the bad dance move. But like the recent tour that she did. Uh. I've seen like the compilations of her doing the dance with the microphone pole. Yes, that that's, that's the one I'm talking about. Okay. So cool. she does like a hair flip. So yeah. I start doing that, and then I was like, <laughs> "What would really take it there? What if I did a jump split?" <laughs> <laughs> I do a jump split, twerk in that, get up, and then I hand the napkin to someone else, and I walk away as if nothing had just happened. I said, "Okay, thanks," and I went and grabbed my drink. <laughs> And my parents came back into the room and they're like, we just heard that you did a split. <laughs> they're like, why? Why Why did you do that? And I was like, I just felt it in the moment. Yeah. And then the next morning we were having like a brunch with all like the like the bridal party and like close family and friends. And we all went around in a circle. I'm like, it was so sweet. Everyone was like, share like your favorite memory from the night. And <laughs> there were people that literally just went, Caroline split. <laughs> <laughs> Like in really sweet voice. Like, and like yeah. literally like several people said that. And my sister went, she's like, there are a lot of people who enjoyed Caroline's split. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents are just sitting there like, oh, that's our kid. Yeah. <laughs> and they missed it too, right? They you missed said it. They, they walked God, back into the room. Honestly, and... thank God they weren't there. Because yeah. they, oh no. Like my dad would have been like, stop it. <laughs> But here's the thing, like my parents are the life of the party too. Like they're dancing crazy. Like my dad, I think at one point, like all the groomsmen were coming up to him, like chanting his name. They're like, Mark, that's our bro. Like <laughs> somebody gave him their sunglasses and he's like dancing around in them. Oh my God. Like it was ridiculous. Parents, so parents love a wedding. They really they do. They love a wedding. It's, it's, I've seen it. I've like, I've they gone do. to all my friends' weddings and the parents just turn up. Mm -hmm. Like I went, I went to my, my, one of my best friends, Gabriella's wedding. Mm -hmm. And I, I've known her a long time. We were roommates in college. Mm -hmm. So I know her, I know her parents and I go step out. It was like a barn type oh, uh, bar yeah. reception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had the whole property for the whole like ceremony reception, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember stepping out and I see her dad and I'm like, oh gonna go say hey i walk over and i'm like hey like congratulations like the day was beautiful he's like yeah man thanks you want to take a shot and i'm like yes i do yeah absolutely <laughs> and he just pulls out like these little like the one shooter like bottles that you get at the liquor that. store that are up in like the, pl the plastic display yes. squares and it was it was some weird like banana tequila something and i'm like this is not a good idea oh my god but Father of the bride just offered me a shot, and now I have to take the shot. You absolutely I do. Absolutely. And so we took the shot, and he's like, "Yeah, man, thank you so much for coming. Like, we appreciate it. Like, we love seeing you guys." And I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." And then he like grabbed a bog. He was like, he went into dad mode early, where he was also like starting to pack up the mm -hmm. night and whatnot. And but it's like parents love a wedding. Parents love feral mode. I feel like in general, oh, yeah. like even like yesterday at my job, I, I work at a bar now, and I was serving and these two young girls came in and one, one of them brought their dad and there is a drink that literally has the, I'm not going to say it on camera, but the F word in it. And he was like, he was so excited to say it out loud. He like screamed it. And I yeah. was like, and he was pounding shots pounding them and at one point he was like, do you want to take a shot with us? I was like, I can't do that at work. <laughs> and he was like, why not? That's a crime. <laughs> like so angry. <laughs> like, it's it was so funny, but I just sit there. I'm like, there are so many people I know. Like I, I've gone out. One of my really good friends from college, her mom would come and visit frequently, and she was a party animal, mm -hmm. and she was so flipping fun to hang out with. But like we would be at the bar, and she'd be going ham on <laughs> drinks, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't keep up with Shelly. <laughs> like I don't know how she does it. Oh. 
Yeah, it's my my mom is the one. So we go out on the boat in the summer, mm -hmm. and my mom breaks out the giant thing of Fireball, and oh the, like I, the like the one point five liter bottle that you get at Costco that has the <sighs> handle built in. Yes. Um, and then there's also the one liter giant bottle of rum chata, oh which God. she thinks is uh. Her her word, the direct quote, effing delicious. <laughs> Not even, she didn't even say the curse word? No, no. I, I said it correctly. Effing delicious. That is exactly how she says it. Um, My tequila is effing yeah. delicious. Effing delicious. <laughs> and she will, and that's that's another thing. We do these boat parties. Like, I'm going home for one in June. We're going to be out on the water by 6 a.m. <laughs> and, which means I'm waking up. I'm waking up at 5:30 in the morning to go drink to get to, get to the boat. We're gonna we're gonna drive the boat out. We're gonna park it. We're gonna tie up. As soon as there's a boat on either side of us, we're done. We don't need to do any oh, more work. Oh my god! And then once that happens, let's call it 6:15. My mom's making Bloody Marys, and she's like, "Do you want one?" And I'm like, "Well, that's why I'm here. That's why I flew in." I didn't fly in to be out on a boat at 6:30 sober. Oh my god! So and she doesn't. She doesn't understand alcohol. I don't know how else to say it. She'll put four shots of Tito's into a Bloody Mary. And when I say that it tastes strong, she'll be like, oh, I don't know. Do you want to know how I made all my cocktails? When I say cocktails, I mean like my Gatorade infused drinks in college. Well, that just seems like good sense. You're well, hydrating while you uh, dehydrate. While you get your electrolytes, yeah. No, so here's, <laughs> so here I am, I'm in my college dorm and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make a cocktail and put it into a Gatorade bottle and nobody will know. So sure. I would sit there um, in my black tube top and ripped jeans that we all wore because it was the uniform that you had to wear. And if I you didn't, it. then you weren't a college student. I get it. I, I still have mine. So here's what I would do. I didn't have measuring devices. So how did I pour? I would take... <laughs> I'm scared. I would take the tequila and I would just go one, two, three, four, oh. until I hit 10. And oh. it would be three-fourths tequila, one-fourth whatever I had laying around. Usually it was orange juice. How disgusting is that? And I would chug the whole thing. It is amazing I have memories from college at all. Because this was not a one-time occurrence. This was regular. That or Ooh. at pregames, like, because, I, again, I went to, at the time it was the number one party school in the United States. I'm not sure if it still is. It, it might be. Shout out to Q's. <laughs> Q's bleed orange. No. Um, you're the second Syracuse uh, person to have. Wait, I who else did you have? Liam. The, Wait. The, guest, the guest that I had on Friday. Wait, what? Liam, yeah. I want to meet Liam. You can totally meet Liam. He sounds fun. Is if he went to Syracuse, he was probably really fun back in the day. And he probably still is. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded so mean. Wait, that sounded so mean. I'm sure he's still very, very fun. I bet Liam used to be great. I bet Liam was amazing. I can't, I can't wait to hear stories from Liam back when he used to be fun. I used to be, well, no, I say that because I used to be fun. Like, this is actually so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm going to say this on camera, but I'm going to. My limit in college was 12 shots. Mm. Not, not cocktails, yeah. shots. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's... As an adult now, I have one drink, and I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why do I, I feel like this? <laughs> oh, I know. I've, I've been your bartender multiple times. Okay. Wait, that's a fun story. We literally met be at your job. Yeah. Be we're, through mutual friends. Yeah, we're going to not mention the name of the spot. Because no, we're not. Them, we're not. I don't want them to get but weird. But, no, like, not every us. single Friday, I would... Before I had to start working at a bar myself... Yeah. Sad times, I know, um, but I still I want to come and visit again soon. I will. It's a it's a good time. It's it it's is. a lot. It's a lot on a Friday. Look, I it is a lot I on love, Friday. I love bartending there. I would never hang out there. I'll be honest. At the beginning, we came there because we loved the music. Me yeah. and my girlfriends, like we we would go like religiously. And now I Shout feel like girlfriends. Yes, all of shout you. out to me, all my girlfriends. All the girlfriends. All the girlfriends, yes. Who, um, are, who are all ridiculously talented, and oh. I hope to have that. I 
plan on having all of them on at some point. No, I I really hope you do. Like yeah. they, they're also so freaking funny. Yeah. No. Um, but no, we all met you through literally just our mutual friend who met you like randomly one night a little bit over a year ago. Yeah. And we she was like, guys, like you should all come and meet Justin. And we're like, great. Who is he? <laughs> and we we met you and then we fell in love and we lived happily ever after. And now we come and visit you as often as we can. And we have a great time. Honestly, we really only go at this point to see you. I appreciate that. I also like to make it like cheers for you guys because at this point I know everyone well. I don't ask what you guys want. Oh, I see. I see oh. you walk in. I start making a margarita. But yeah, I you. See, but yet you asked me when I came here today. You're like, "What do you want to drink?" <laughs> well, I so and that's only because I've had I've had on a couple other people and they've given me answers I didn't expect. I'm they 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 didn't like I I'm telling them I'm like. Give me a cocktail. Tell me you want like an old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Tell me you want like a Manhattan, Fair. a paper plane, a margarita. And what they're the just heck like, is a paper plane? Uh, bourbon, lemon juice, Aperol, and an Amaro. Okay, that's it's, that it's, sounds good. It's a it's like a classic. It sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're just like, how about just whiskey on the rocks? And I'm like, okay. Oh, it's they, getting wild in here. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I mean, fine, sure. Uh, but I'm I'm thrilled that you actually said margarita because i get to like make it on camera not today because i didn't want to move everything around i know he time. came out with a mason jar that was pre-made i was like oh this is fun so okay. yeah but like i get to i get to like make the drinks on camera as part of like the intro i love that and, wait that's so fun yeah but like the first two episodes are just going to be like me holding a glass and just like <laughs> and that's going to be it and it's going to be a little silly after like 20 episodes are out and they get to like people get to see like the different drinks. Mm -hmm. But like for someone who's just tuning into the first episode, they're like, why yeah. did he show us him pouring whiskey into a glass? I remember the, I think it wasn't the last time I was there. It was a time before that back in like January at the place where you work that we will not name. Um, but I remember I walked, yes, I walked in and I remember I said, cause you made me a mark and I was like, can I have an Aperol Spritz instead? And you, oh, I was you shocked. looked like I just stabbed you. Yeah. You were shook. I didn't know why or how or who you were, but I wanted my friend back. And it, I know. Yeah. You know what? I miss her too. Yeah. I miss her too. But today, honestly, I was like, you know what? Tequila brings out the honesty in me. So we're going to do tequila. Fantastic. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm quickly regretting it. <laughs> You're like, she's off the wall. No, but like, Margaret, no, literally, since the day I met you, I'm always like, Margaret on the rocks. Yeah. I walk in. That's what I asked for. Yeah. To the point where literally, at this point, you know it's sad, and you know it's really bad, and that you need to go and make new friends and go to other places. When you walk in, and the Marg is already made for you. I, did, I can't I tell did, if that's a win pull, or a lose. I did lose. pull that off once, didn't I? I fully, no, because you knew I was coming. Because yeah. we're friends. And I told him, I was like, I'm going to be there in like 10, 15 minutes or whatever. And he prepared my mark before I got there. Yeah. And I walked in. Oh, I got some dirty looks too from people. <laughs> they were just, because also this place gets packed. Yeah. And I literally just like walked to the front. I'm just like, mm, I'm going to get order my drink. My drink was ready. Yep. And some guy next to me was like, why does she get one now? <laughs> like, it's like, bro, because she ordered it like 15 minutes ago oh over the God. phone. No, it's, it's a it's a pickup order. Like, it's a pickup order. Yeah. She is. Come on. No, I should I should have started a f no. <laughs> I was about to say something. I was about to, I, I, should I, have I, started I, a fight. I should have started a fight. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not gonna say it on camera. No, I, no. Honestly, I have the best times so though. Whenever I come to visit you at work, it's a good time. It's a good time. It's, just it's because, a lot like, of fun. we're well, we're just there to see you too, and we're like, all right, we're just gonna be stupid dance. It's good music. Yeah, which the we love. The DJs are great. The the and that I love. And I think we can we can shout out. It's it's Kev and it's Jerry. Mm -hmm. uh, those are those are two of the best DJs that I've I've had the pleasure of working with. Shout out to everyone that works at the place yeah. that you work. They all rock. Yeah, I love it's, them. It's great. It's 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 actually it's you know Dan. I do the, know Dan. Yes. Dan's birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. <gasps> Happy birthday, Dan. Yeah. Hi. We're, he's in. He, he's not going to see this for like a three weeks but like Damn. you know happy birthday Dan. happy belated birthday Dan. happy belated birthday we're drinking these for you <laughs> cheers to you cheers. dan cheers, cheers to you and cheers to this cheers, cheers to cheers. this even yeah. though i'm like basically empty at this yeah point. we're running low no yeah. i know i think we're also we're at a really good time yeah we're at like an hour and a half damn yeah 
moving quickly. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun, man. How much time do you have left in you? What do you think? Plenty. Plenty? Now. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm let's, having fun. I'm having fun. Let's do a pause and let's refresh some drinks then. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Okay. All right.